come from Takeda, a company that's a member of IFMA, and we're now in the context of the WHO consultation on research ongoing. Could you please tell us where we are uh, today with the Zika virus? You know, there's so much that remains unknown uh, about Zika. Its speed, uh, the rapidity of its spread in Brazil has been a surprise to many people. In fact, one of the new things that, that came up during this meeting is whether there are mosquito vectors other than Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus that might be contributing to its transmission because its speed, the speed with, with which it spread, is faster than um, what was observed with chikungunya. Importantly, the congenital anomalies that uh, accompany infection during pregnancy. It's really quite tragic. The uh, infants who are born with uh, really significant neurological abnormalities, and of course there probably are abortions occurring uh, that haven't been adequately described yet. Can you also tell us from the research and development part, what are the different challenges that we're facing? We're really unprepared. There are no effective therapeutics, no vaccine, even the diagnostic tests are still being developed. The reason that uh, I'm here and, and many other manufacturers from the IFP may are here is to see what we can do to contribute to the global public health effort to prevent uh, this, uh, this outbreak. And how long would it take for us to get a vaccine available? So a typical novel vaccine would take 10 years or more between the beginning of research and then finally uh, licensure. But in this emergency, um, there are certain um, regulatory pathways that could accelerate, uh, if not licensure, then at least distribution of the vaccine, a conditional kind of distribution of the vaccine, in which uh, there would be potentially a public health benefit, and then the uh, full examination of effectiveness and safety uh, accompany that public health implementation. One has to be very careful with this, obviously, to ensure that we're not rolling out a vaccine that hasn't been scrutinized carefully for its safety and efficacy both. Ted, one last question. Could you tell us your takeaway message from this conference, please? One important uh, aspect of, of this meeting is the very collaborative manner in which the various stakeholders are, are engaging in in trying to confront this public health issue. It's academics, manufacturers, non-governmental agencies, funding sources, everybody is uh, terrifically engaged. There still remains much to be uh, discovered and, and clarified with respect to the pathogenesis of this disease, the, the complications, the congenital anomalies and, and the neurological syndrome. Also how the virus is being spread so rapidly and we, we need some understanding of these basic issues to help with the uh, prevention and therapeutic efforts. To carry out proper surveillance, one needs good diagnostics, specific diagnostics, that's number one. And obviously to treat patients, we need novel therapies. Uh, we don't have anything developed as of yet specific for Zika virus. And lastly, uh, for prevention, uh, we'll need vaccines. Here, we're actually having to develop novel uh, vaccines. In some cases, we can build upon existing platforms that have been used for dengue vaccine and other flaviviruses, Japanese encephalitis, tick-borne encephalitis, yellow fever. Uh, but all of this is going to take some time.